Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today I'm gonna to cover everything you need to know for getting started with silicone mold making. And I'm gonna do an unboxing and try a brand new brand of molding silicone. And I bought this because it's about half the price of what you typically find out there on the web. So let's go ahead and unbox this. I'll discuss what type of silicone this is, and then we'll get into the detail of how you can select the right kind of silicone for the job you're doing. And then I'll show you a technique for copying a mold that you already have. All right, let's break the seal on this. And as usual, you got a two-part silicone intended as a one-to-one -one mix. And that's why both containers are the same size. So the brand is Granny Doreen, which I had never heard of. I like the fact that it's a platinum cure type resin, especially at this price. Now I paid right at $14, including shipping, and you get 2.4 pounds of silicone mix. The packaging says to mix by weight. There's a little difference in volume in the two, but I'm gonna take an educated guess and say that you're gonna get about 700 milliliters of actual volume once you mix it. Now I'm gonna get into the difference between platinum and tin cure and get into the hardness rating so that you have an idea of how to select your own silicone. This one has a hardness rating, a sure number of A5, where it's sort of on the harder side of the softer type silicone. So let's talk about how to select the right hardness. It's gonna depend on what it is you're casting and the style of mold you're gonna make. If you're making a larger mold that you intend to use, say like this one as a injection mold, for soft plastics. You don't want it to go out of shape as you're injecting that hot soft plastic. So you wanna go with a sure number somewhere around A20 to A35. I think for typical lure making, the range between A0 and A60 is probably all you need to look at. I typically buy silicones that are in the A5 to A20 range. And it usually gives me the firmness at the higher end and the softness at the lower end that I need for those specific projects I'm working on. If you're making one piece mold, you need a lot of flexibility, a lot of stretch in your mold so you can get your part back out, then you wanna tend towards the lower end. I would go with an A0. And if you're casting something that has a, a big change in shape and you need to stretch that rubber, you'll have to go down below the A's and go to the double A softness numbers. On the other hand, if you're casting something out of plaster or even concrete, then you really want to get up into the really high end of firmness because you don't want that heavy material to sort of deform your casting. Now the difference between tin cure and platinum cure silicone is the metal they use as a curing agent. What it means to you as the end user is that first there's a difference in price. The platinum obviously is going to be more expensive. The tin is the cheaper version. They both come in the same ranges of softness and hardness and the same ranges of set time. The difference is longevity after you've made your mold. I have a whole drawer here of old molds that I still use on occasion, ranging from really little ones to big heavy ones. And nearly all of this is made with the Tin Cure. Here's one that is at least six years old. And this is Tin Cure and it's still flexible and usable. But the typical numbers given for the difference between tin and platinum is that the Tin Cure will have a typical useful life of about a year to two years and the platinum will have something around three to five years. Now, I haven't found that to be true. I have plenty of tin cure molds that have lasted me six to seven years. What I find is that the silicone rubber degrades more out of use than it does being stored. The more castings you make, the quicker it degrades. And it does, after time, become more likely to tear. Two-part molds tend to last a little longer because they don't get the abuse of being stretched, but they still slowly degrade. In fact, today what we're gonna do with this new silicone is reproduce this two-part mold. And the reason I'm anxious to get a new mold going is because I'm in the middle of a production run a little bit. I got another 10 or 15 lures to mold and that old mold is starting to get a little bit weird. I'm getting a little too much flash and there's a couple little flaws in the mold itself. So typically I'll take my master that I plan to make the mold out of and I'll embed it halfway into a bed of clay. And that's where I start off for my first pour for the first side of that mold. And if you haven't seen me do that process, I'll go ahead and put a link here so you can see how I actually do it with the clay bed. But because that's a lot of work and I already have mold halves to work with, what I'm gonna do is make copies of these molds directly from the mold. And because I use Legos to make the original box, I can just put it back into a box made of Legos the same size then build that up so it'll be high enough and thick enough and I'll be able to pour the silicone right over my master and the old silicone mold and what I'll end up with is the opposite side of the mold. And then I'll just switch 
and pour the other side. So step one will be to put Vaseline all over the silicone because silicone will stick to silicone. Now the only other thing I need to account for is the sprue or the hole that you use to pour the casting material into and the vent holes. I want to go ahead and repeat those and to do that I'm going to use clay to fill in so that when I pour the new silicone on it it's already formed into the mold. I'm going to use this brown colored clay so that it'll be easy for you to see. I'm just going to make a little cylinder shape there and cut it the length. And to refine the shape well, you have to have your master in place. And because I had originally used some solder cut into small segments as my forms for the vents, I can just do that again. All right, that's what it's gonna look like before I pour, but right now I'm gonna pull these out and coat the whole old silicone with Vaseline. Now this is a really important part of this because if you don't get this right, your silicone halves will stick together. And I'm just using a generic petroleum jelly. You can also use a mold release spray, but I feel a lot more confident putting it on by hand, knowing that I covered every surface. The inside of the lure part of the mold doesn't have to be coated, but I'm gonna coat it anyway. It's gonna help keep that master in there, not shifting around, and it's gonna seal this edge uh, from any seepage. All right, I've finished that part. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set this back in. Now I can put in this little riser for the box and you can see it creates a space in there so that the top wall thickness is at least a quarter of an inch. This is going to be slightly thicker. So at this point we're ready to mix and pour. All right. So the next step is to figure out how much volume of the, of the uh, silicone you're going to need. I like to measure the depth, the width and the height, multiply those numbers together and get that volume. And I'll do that in centimeters. So I have my volume in cubic centimeters because one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. It doesn't account for reducing the amount that the lure half takes up, but it doesn't account for the added silicone you need to fill in all the key marks, the little divots that are in the old mold. So I typically mix the maximum that I need and that usually is enough with very little waste. All right, so my depth is 1.6 millimeters. It's 47 millimeters wide. 196 millimeters long. So I get about 46 milliliters for the volume. So I'll probably mix like 50 to account for the amount that I lose in the cup. Now this stuff is supposed to be mixed by weight. So I'm gonna mix it by weight using this little scale here and I'm gonna be measuring in ounces, but I'm gonna be eyeballing the volume. So I'm gonna put in approximately what looks like to me 25 milliliters and I'll note the, the amount of weight that is on part A and then I'll add the exact same amount of weight of part B. And hopefully we'll be around 50 milliliters. So this stuff tends to be pretty viscous and slow pouring. Be careful not to over pour because you'll end up with just some waste. So I'm just gonna eyeballing what 25 should be. And that should be about 25 milliliters. Now if you under pour, if you under mix, you can always add a little more silicone to your mold box. They'll stick together perfectly and it's better to underdo it because this way you don't have any waste. So I've got 1.15 ounces in weight. So I'm going to try to duplicate that with part B, which is clear. So you'll have a hard time seeing it. So I need to go to 2.30. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's 2.29, which is pretty doggone close. Now I like using a metal stirring stick. This is a little piece of uh, flat aluminum. And I like that because it seems to make fewer bubbles than wood. And it's just a matter of folding it all together. Take your time, mix it in, try not to make too many bubbles. Even though this stuff is thin enough that it, it'll off gas all those bubbles pretty quickly. Now I've got about 15 to 20 minutes of work time. Be sure you scrape the sides the best you can. And then every now and then scrape your uh, stirring stick off. The idea is to scrape the bottom, the sides, and make sure there's no little pockets of unmixed silicone. All right, after I feel like I've got it pretty thoroughly mixed. I'm gonna let it just sit here and rest for just a few minutes. And you can see the bubbles coming up to the surface and just popping. All right, so I'm ready to pour and fill this. But first I wanna coat the lure master first. So I'm just gonna just very slowly coat this with a really thin coat. This way it can't hold any bubbles. So hopefully you can see how thin a layer that is. So thin that it actually won't hold a bubble. All right, now I can start pouring from one corner in a really thin stream. and allowing it just to flow and fill in all the cavities. And we should have just about the right amount with only just a little bit of waste. Of course, if I had come under, 
I could always mix just a little more. The other thing you want to be sure of is that your mold is level. So I put a little stirring stick here and another little piece of wood under that corner because mine's just a little off. So the instructions on the side of the box say that it, the full set time is three to four hours. Generally, it's like eight hours. So I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully it'll set up nicely. I am getting some seepage between the Lego blocks. I must not have crunched them together good enough, but it looks like it stopped. I think we'll be all right. We'll come back to it in about four hours and we'll prepare to pour it the other side. So while this sets up, I think it's a perfect time for the question of the week. So I had several questions about this crankbait I made in the last video. Now, if you haven't seen the video, it was a bit of a challenge for me. This is a lure design that had failed in the past for me and it almost failed this time, but I was able to find a fix while we were testing it. So I feel like I need to do a little bit of a follow-up with it. And I had a few questions about what I would do to maximize the performance on this. So let's look at a close-up of the head of this lure. So if I set up a horizontal line, more or less the center of the lure, and I look at the bib angle, off that horizontal and end up over here somewhere around 20 to 25, maybe a little more than 25 degrees off of the horizontal. And some folks suggested that a greater angle might be a good idea. And that was something I think I might've mentioned in the video too, that I think I would increase the angle of the bid just a bit, just to add a little more energy to the action. But I don't think a larger bib is really necessary. I think this size bib is just about right. You might be able to go a little bigger without getting such a big head movement that it takes the subtlety out of the tail movement. So I would probably go to an angle more like 30 degrees, move the bib down the face. By moving the bib down, you actually move it back on the lure a little bit. And now when you put a tie-on eye on there, it actually is now extending farther out, giving you a bigger action and a more tunable lure. All right, it's been about three hours. Let's see what it looks like. It's hard, but it's still kind of tacky. So I'm gonna give it another hour or two all right, it's been a good five hours and let's see what it feels like. Oh yeah, that's nice and firm. I think we're ready to pull this apart. Well, I had a bunch leak out, but that's my fault. I like leaving a little tab block just so I can pull it apart. All right, Oop. that's about as clean as I expected to see it. I'll have to just trim that off. Comes off pretty clean. All right, there you go. Now it doesn't look quite as horrifying. So I'm gonna go ahead and get going here and see if we can't finish this tonight. I'm just gonna coat all the surfaces. Uh, I'm not gonna coat the actual body of the lure. I don't want any streaks on it from the Vaseline. and I'm pushing this down nice and tight. I don't want another leakage issue. All right, I'm gonna use the exact same amount of silicone as I did on the other side. And since I don't need to worry about volume because I already have the weight of what I need, all I need now is to add the same amount of weight that I did last time. So I'm gonna go 1.2 ounces of both parts. I overshot it by uh, three one hundredths, so I'll just match it with the other one. All right, there it is, 1.23, right on the money. Time to mix this up. I'll start off by drizzling some on the body and getting a real nice thin coat on it. And if you're doing this in a colder temperature, it's like in the 60s here tonight, but if you're doing it in a little colder temperature, you can always hit this with a blow dryer and get it to flow a little better over the body. No real waste to speak of and no cleanup. I just toss this out and I'm done for the night. So I'll see y'all in the morning. All right, brand new day. And it looks and feels like this is nicely set. Oops. Not nearly as much mess as last time. So far, no sticking. That's good. All right, that looks perfect. Look at the sheen inside there. That's perfect. Compared to the old one, it's basically dull. And that's what happens. They slowly start to degrade. This guy 
and we get another perfect surface. Awesome. So I'm pretty happy with that. All I'm going to do now is clean up the vents, make sure they go all the way through, and then I'm going to probably cut another one right here behind the sprue. And I'm just going to do that with razor blade. And I'm going to wipe it down really well with denatured alcohol to get all that Vaseline off that I can feel in my fingers. So I'll just take the scissors and make sure that the vents go all the way through and get the mold nicely cleaned up both halves. So I'm preparing my typical arrangement for an internal wire harness. The counterweight is just a split shot and that tube is a rattle chamber and it fits the mold perfectly. All right, so let's mix some casting resin. Standard mix is a 10% mix with uh, micro balloons. So I'll add six grams of part A, six grams of part B, and then 1.2 grams of micro balloons. Okay, there's six grams. And I like to mix my micro balloons in before I add part B, because you really don't have much time with this. It starts setting up within two minutes. So I'll zero my scale again. And I'll start adding my micro balloons till I get to 1.2. And there it is, 1.2. This is just a matter of blending this so it's nice and smooth. Doesn't take much time. All right, I'll zero the scale again. And now I add six grams of part B. All right. Now I need to stir pretty quickly. Try not to get too violent here. I don't want to add a bunch of bubbles. And it'll start to warm up in your hand. And it's starting just about now to warm up and we'll pour in in a nice thin stream. Now it's just a matter of waiting about 15 to 20 minutes. In the meantime, I'll finish my coffee. It's cold already. And we'll get back to this when this is ready for demolding. Time to take a look at the casting. It's a matter of opening it up nice and gently, making sure it's not sticking but this came out really nice. You can see where the vents were and I just cleaned those off and then cut off the sprue and there it is. Nice smooth sides. All right, after cleaning off the sprue waste and everything, well-formed casting with a nice rattle in it too. So I need to make about nine more of these and I think the silicone really turned out to be a good deal. It is a little on the soft side. Typically for a two-part mold, I like it just a little bit stiffer, but this will do just fine, especially since the price point on this is so attractive. Really $14 for nearly two and a half pounds. That's actually a little better than half the price of most of the stuff out there. So I'll be sure I put a good link in the Amazon store. So if you guys want some of this stuff, you can get it. And if you have a different experience with this than I did, let me know. But I think it's a good value. So if you like the product reviews, let me know, give me a like, and don't forget to subscribe and give me any suggestions for products you'd like to see me review in the comments. And remember the question of the week comes from you guys. So feel free to submit a question in the comments. And if your question is picked for the question of the week, I'll usually elaborate on any answer I've already given. All right, I'll see y'all next Friday. <music>